Hello and welcome to the Housing and Services Resource Center's virtual workshop series, Identifying and Building Partnerships with Your Local Housing Sector. The series consists of three brief virtual workshops. In this second workshop, you will learn about specific housing programs, including public housing and HUD assisted housing programs. The first virtual workshop covers some introductory housing concepts. The third and final virtual workshop provides you with some strategies for engaging your local officials. These virtual workshops are a product of the Housing and Services Resource Center, or HSRC, which is a partnership between the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, HHS, and the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD. The HSRC is administered by the Administration for Community Living, or ACL, through a contract with Mission Analytics, which subcontracts the work to U.S. Aging. The HSRC fosters collaboration and partnerships between the organizations and systems that work to help people live successfully and stably in the community, such as those providing housing resources, homelessness services, healthcare and mental health services, independent living services, home and community-based services, supportive services, and more. At the end of the virtual workshop, we hope you will look at the HSRC website at acl.gov backslash housing and services. To cultivate these cross-sector partnerships, the HSRC coordinates technical assistance across the federal agencies, facilitates state and local partnerships between housing, disability, aging, and health service providers, identifies and shares innovations and promising practices from housing and services collaborations, assists stakeholders in finding ways to leverage and align resources to make community living possible for more people. For more information about partnership opportunities, go to acl.gov, click on HSRC, and there you will find this fact sheet and much more information. In order for people with disabilities of all ages to have access to both the housing and the services and supports they need to live in the community, there must be partnerships at the federal, state, and local levels between housing and service systems and every organization that supports the goal of community living. Affordable and accessible housing with supportive services is vital to optimizing the health of people with disabilities and older adults and providing them with full opportunity to participate in community life. Partnerships between the housing sector and the aging and disability networks enhance the range of housing for the growing and changing needs of people of all ages with disabilities and older adults. When a person experiences problems with finding and securing housing that is affordable, accessible, and supportive, their risk for homelessness increases. People with disabilities are more likely to experience homelessness, and researchers project the number of older people who are homeless will continue to rise. Partnerships among homelessness assistance agencies, the aging and disability networks, and the housing sector, as well as other sectors such as transportation, can help reduce risk and swiftly transition people who are experiencing homelessness into more stable housing. And we know that partnerships require a commitment. The Brookings Institution thinks of this commitment as connective tissue. It is their way of describing the infrastructure needed to support intentional alignment, coordination, and integration between sectors or organizations that serve the same or similar populations in a community. Infrastructure refers to both tangible elements, such as information exchange systems, financing personnel, shared language, intangible elements of trust and shared goals. Developing systems and trust that address cross-sector needs does not just happen. It requires a deliberate process that moves beyond the individual goals of any one system towards a community-wide approach. Let's start with the public housing programs. 
Public housing was established to provide decent and safe rental housing for eligible low-income families, older adults, and persons with disabilities. Public housing comes in all sizes and types, from scattered single-family houses to high-rise apartments. There are approximately 1.2 million households living in public housing units, managed by some 3,300 public housing authorities. Since passage of the U.S. Housing Act of 1937, the federal government has provided housing assistance to low-income renters. There are 3,300 public housing agencies, also called housing authorities or PHAs, across the United States. Some are very large and manage multiple properties and different types of programs, and some are smaller. Some housing authorities are part of a city or county government, but most housing authorities exist apart from other government structures and have a board of commissioners. Some agencies do not have the words housing authority in their name. For example, the Los Angeles County Development Authority, or LACTA, is a housing authority. PHAs are generally governed by an elected or appointed board of commissioners and managed by an executive director. As you learned in our first virtual workshop, public housing agencies can administer tenant-based and or project-based income-based affordable housing programs. One of the PHA project-based programs is public housing, which was just discussed. The other project-based program administered by some PHAs is the project-based voucher or PVV program. PBV are housing choice vouchers that we will discuss momentarily that are attached to units in a specific property so that they are no longer tenant-based mobile vouchers. PHAs use project-based vouchers for a variety of reasons. One reason is to secure housing in communities where the rent is rapidly increasing, making it difficult to lease up with a tenant-based voucher. Approximately 2,200 of these PHAs manage tenant-based rental assistance programs as well. The primary tenant-based program is the Housing Choice Voucher Program, also referred to as the Section 8 Program, or HCV. As we discussed in the first virtual workshop, this program helps people with the lowest incomes afford housing in the private market by paying landlords the difference between what a household can afford to pay for rent and the actual rent to the owner up to a reasonable amount. The Housing Choice Voucher Program is HUD's largest rental assistance program, assisting approximately 1.8 million households. Over the last 20 years, Congress has created some vouchers for specific target populations. These include mainstream, and non-elderly, disabled, or NED voucher programs targeted to people with disabilities under age 62, including people transitioning from institutions into the community. The Veterans Affairs for Supportive Housing, or VASH, program is targeted to homeless veterans, and the Family Unification Program, or FUP, targets youth aging out of foster care or reuniting with families. It is important to remember that although these special voucher types are targeted to serve specific populations, they are housing choice vouchers and must follow most of the same rules as the housing choice voucher program. The newer emergency housing voucher or EHV program is also administered by PHAs. Congress created this program specifically for people experiencing homelessness. Referrals for EHVs come from the local continuum of care. States and communities report that the EHV emergency housing vouchers are advantageous as they include funding for certain services that help families successfully secure a unit, such as assistance with first month's rent, security deposits, or back utility bills, and more. HUD has an easy to use directory to help you find your local, regional, or state PHA. 
When you visit the page at the link on this slide, you will see a drop down list of states as well as a map. Select the state from the drop down or click on a state, and you will see a list of contacts in that state. This slide provides an example of what you would see if you clicked on the state of California. First, you can see that the PHAs are listed in alphabetical order by geographic location, Almeida, Alhambra, and Anaheim, et cetera. If you look at the fourth column, you can also see the type of housing programs that the PHA administers. For example, the Almeida PHA administers the Section 8 Housing Choice Voucher Program, but not public housing. The Los Angeles County Development Authority administers both the Section 8 Housing Choice Voucher and public housing. That's what combined in column four means. Why don't you pause this pre recorded virtual workshop and use the link to find the PHA in your area and determine what programs they administer? HUD's website provides other helpful information about voucher programs administered by the PHAs in your state and community. For example, HUD publishes the Housing Choice Voucher Dashboard that provides information about the status of the special purpose voucher programs. If you go to the link on this slide, you will find the Housing Choice Voucher Dashboard. Page seven of the dashboard provides these data on the mainstream program, the non-elderly disabled or NED program, the family unification or FUP, and the Veterans Affairs for Supportive Housing DASH program. This dashboard can be a powerful tool for community efforts to identify gaps and approach relevant entities. For each of these four special purpose programs, you can select a specific state and or a specific PHA to review. You can see the number of special purpose vouchers awarded, how many are leased, and what percentage that is of the award. I've pulled up the first page for the mainstream vouchers from May 2022. You can see that awards of mainstream vouchers have been made to the Alaska Housing Finance Corporation, a state PHA, the Birmingham and Mobile, Alabama PHAs, and so on. You can see that in Mobile, Alabama, only 42% of their mainstream vouchers were leased. It is important to remember that because of how the data are collected, reviewed, and uploaded by HUD, it may be several months old. It is also important to remember that while not all of the PHA's vouchers are leased, the PHA may have issued vouchers to many other people who are in the process of housing search and simply have yet to sign a lease or lease up. Finally, it is important to remember that tight rental markets are making it hard for participants in many communities to find units in the private market. Nonetheless, if the PHA in your area has a low utilization or lease-up rate, such as the rate of 42% on this chart, you may want to reach out to the PHA to see if there is an opportunity to partner to more fully utilize this important resource. Watch for more on this in the third virtual workshop in this series. This would be a good time to pause the virtual workshop, go to the dashboard at the link listed on this page, and see whether your PHA is administering any of the special purpose vouchers. If so, what is their result rate? For more information about the special purpose vouchers that are specifically targeted to people with disabilities under age 62, Please check out these two web pages, HUD's Mainstream Voucher webpage and HUD's Non-Elderly Disabled or NED Voucher webpage. Let's turn from public housing agencies and vouchers to another important source of affordable housing, HUD-assisted rental housing. In addition to public housing and the Housing Choice Voucher Program, 
The third major type of HUD rental assistance is a collection of programs generally referred to as multifamily assisted or privately owned project-based housing. These types of housing assistance fall under a collection of programs created during the last four decades. What these programs have in common is that they provide rental housing that is owned by private landlords who enter into contracts with HUD in order to receive housing subsidies. The subsidies pay the difference between the tenant rent and total rental costs total rental costs. The subsidy arrangement is termed project-based because the assistance is tied to the units at the property and therefore the assisted household cannot take the subsidy with them if they move to another location. Project-based is a term we learned in the first virtual workshop in this series. To learn more about HUD multifamily programs, go to www.hud.gov backslash program offices backslash housing backslash MFH backslash P-R-O-G-D-E-S-C. We are going to focus on affordable housing programs funded through HUD's housing division that target serving older adults and adults who have disabilities. The housing division also funded many other private owners to develop affordable housing open to all families, regardless of age or disability. The Section 202 Supportive Housing for the Elderly Program provides funding to nonprofit organizations that develop and operate housing for older adults with very low incomes. HUD provides capital advances to finance the construction, rehabilitation, and or acquisition of structures that will serve as supportive housing for very low income adults over 62 years of age, including frail older adults, and provides rent subsidies for the projects to help make them affordable. The 202 program allows older adults to age in place and avoid unnecessary, unwanted, and costly institutionalization. Section 202 residents have access to community-based services and support to keep living independently and age in place in their community. Some properties have a percentage of units designed to be accessible to persons younger than 62 with mobility impairments or may serve people with other targeted disabilities. The program currently serves an estimated 400,000 households. Through the Section 811 Supportive Housing for Persons with Disabilities program, HUD provides funding to develop and subsidize rental housing with the availability of supportive services for very low and extremely low income adults with disabilities. Through the capital advance component of the 811 program, HUD provides funds to nonprofit developers to develop group homes and independent living apartments for adults with disabilities under age 62. Many of these properties are owned by provider organizations such as an ARC chapter. The 811 Capital Advance Program serves an estimated 28,000 households in over 2,390 properties. The Project Rental Assistance or PRA component of Section 811 Program provides funds to state housing finance agencies for the development of integrated housing for adults with disabilities under age 62. The state housing agencies identify private developers willing to lease up to 25% of the units in their property to this population. These projects receive project-based rental assistance, but must secure capital from other sources, such as the low-income housing tax credit, home, or National Housing Trust Fund programs. Funding to date for the 811 PRA Project Rental Assistance Program is expected to produce over 9,000 leads. For more information about each of these programs, check out the links on this slide. To find out whether your state is one of the 30 that administer the 811 PRA program, check out the grantee link. To locate specific properties funded by the 202 and 811 Capital Advance Program, 
use the HUD housing locator, whose link is also on this page. States are also very important players in affordable housing. Each state has one or more state housing agencies. States fund affordable housing using funds received from federal government, such as the Home National Housing Trust Fund or Low Income Housing Tax Credit programs. Some state-funded affordable housing projects have project-based subsidies and some do not. We encourage you to explore both the State Community Development Departments, or COSCA, and the National Council of State Housing Agencies, or NCSHA, websites. The NCSHA website, for example, has links to its members' state ag housing agencies' web pages. Often, these state agency web pages will include an online listing of affordable housing financed by the agency. Many of these projects have not received funding directly from HUD and therefore may not currently be included in the HUD housing locator, whose link was on the previous slide. Over 40 organizations mostly states, provide free access to a statewide housing search database. Previously known as SocialServe, check out the My Housing Search webpage to determine whether your state uses this system to list available units. The website includes housing opportunities that have project-based subsidies, as well as those with market rents that could potentially be leased by individuals who already have vouchers. There is a special function to search specifically for accessible housing, housing for older adults, veterans, and others. In this virtual workshop, we reviewed public housing and HUD multifamily affordable housing programs and how you and or the clients you serve can find out which affordable housing resources are available in your community. We'd like to get your input on this workshop and interest in future topics. And remember, the HSRC is your resource center. Please email us at hsrc at acl.hhs.gov with your questions about this virtual workshop, technical assistance needs, website suggestions, and your own cross-sector partnerships. And check out the HSRC website at acl.gov backslash housing and services. Thank you for your interest in learning more about housing. Visit workshop number three to learn more about identifying, engaging, and building partnerships with your local housing sector.